morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time of day watching this indeed, whereabouts in the world you are. I'm Bod, this is Eurotruck Simulator 2. I do apologise for the lack of Sunday's episode. I really wasn't feeling too good. But on the plus side, we did have a really good stream on Tuesday night, and I'll tell you more about that as we get going. Today's soundtrack is requested by Mr. Watson690, who is, by the way, now on 200 subscribers. Congratulations, sir. We need a job, don't we? I think we need a job. Let's just double check. Yeah, we're in this stupid fucking quarry, aren't we? We're fully rested, so let's get ourselves a job. Let's talk first about patch notes. Actually, let's, let's get rid of that. Um, what? You have a truck simulator 2, 1.20 is coming out soon, right? And they're going to finally, finally, have a proper customizable GPS. You can make your sat nav go wherever you want, with the only limit with the only limit being ten waypoints. That's more than enough. You could actually map a proper course across Europe. That'd be fun. That would that really would be a lot of fun, I think. Hmm, country roads to Aberdeen, eh? Anyway, that's coming up soon. That's available for beta testing on Steam if anybody's interested. And I've got the list of the, uh, some other patch notes here as well, but we're going to be going from Glasgow, Bergen, Southampton, Christian Sand, <laughs> canned beef, Iron Bipes, Berlin, Paris, Stockholm. Offer expires in 14 minutes. I don't think we're going to get there somehow. Not in time, anyway. £50 a mile, £50 a mile. I do want that Stockholm one. Oh, that one's actually quite good. 80 per mile. We're going to Paris. We're going to Paris. Let's go to Paris. Oh. Oh, yeah. Manual gears. Parking brake engage? Go. So, Tuesday night we had a live stream, a test stream for Hope Athlon. 19 people registered to be watched. That doesn't take into account how many people are actually registered to be. So that doesn't take into account how many people are actually watching the stream. So, let, let's um, put it into some sort of context. We wanted a test stream. So, we asked everybody to open as many browsers as they could, open as many tabs, get the stream going as ma in as many windows as they can. Some people were saying seven streams, seven, some people were saying ten. Ten seemed to be the average. Honestly, no complaints, no complaints, because we worked out, well by we I mean Simon, Simon worked out that pretty much because each extra stream is a draw on Beam's resources, right? And they seem to be putting about 100, 150 requests for streams onto Beam. Only 19 registered users were watching the stream, but each of those 19 users had about 10, 15 windows open. Let's turn the lights on. each of these requesting a stream from Beam, so we're quite happy now. We've stress tested Beam, we're happy it can take what we want for Hope Athlon. Ah, speed limit, who cares about speed limits? We should actually, because we're still on the challenge. I've also just realised I can't actually hear the soundtrack at what Watson's requested, which is a shame. Because I do like the Sonic 3 soundtrack. Go, go, go. All this way to get to Glasgow. Fucking hell. So yeah, the, the test stream was great. We started off with playing some Unturned. Which by the time you guys are watching this, should have gone live on my YouTube channel. Then we moved on to Minecraft. Did some Breakfast. Breakfast was an interesting one because that actually takes a lot of effort to process by the computer to give you guys a quality smooth stream. 
So for you guys to get a nice solid 60 frames per second with 150 people watching it on Beam. With very little chat lag actually. And then we ended up with Town of Salem, some nice interactive Town of Salem. It was a good stream. Very productive, very successful. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the rest of the Hopathlon committee. Thank you very much everybody that turned up and helped us and spread the word to tell everybody what we were doing. Which reminds me, after this I need to speak to Andy to say, Hey Andy, babe, how's it going? Let's talk about some flyers, shall we? Because uh, this Saturday, I will be at Insomnia with Bertai, Drazar, the Pastafarian, possibly Simon, possibly. Although, given Simon now has a job and he is very busy, I very much doubt Simon will be joining us. For the same reasons, pretty much, that Neil won't be joining us after all, because he is spending his money on saying some of his own brand utensils for his university apartment. By the way, Neil, I don't think I actually mentioned on camera, but congratulations for getting into university, my friend. Speaking of congratulations, let's offer our congratulations to the contest winner. We mentioned right at the end of the live stream. The contest winner was... Kerry Ann, what's the face? Who designed for us a very lovely joypad. If you go onto the Hope Athlon Twitter, or even the Hope Athlon Facebook page, you will see the joypad that she designed. It's not only so much an I a mascot as a nice, shiny, awesome icon, but you know, I, I like it. I do like it. The, the quality of entries is very high. We had lots of awesome suggestions. We laughed, we cried, we empathised, some took their heartstrings, others made us go, yes. But at the end of the day, there could only be one winner, so congratulations, carry on, what's the face? And thank you to everybody that participated. Over the coming weeks, we'll be revealing some fun ideas for the Hope Athlon merchandising that we've asked you about. So, stop, Tildy. Oh, come on, it's four in the morning. Where's the traffic? Let me go. Go, 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 go. What's something else is going to talk about? Hope Athlon went well. Not Hope Athlon itself, just the test stream. Honestly, I had concerns for the stability of Beam. And I'm very happy now that it went well. So, we, I think pretty sure we're going to be using Beam for the actual event. Let's talk about Eurotruck 1.20. The latest patch that's coming in. Actually, first, let's pick up this job. That would make sense more, wouldn't it? View job offer. We're going to Paris. We could take some sulfuric acid to Berlin. Or we could take 10 ton of, 17 ton of hot chemical to Aberdeen. Let's go to Aberdeen, everybody! we we'll actually be able to complete that this episode, hopefully. Yeah, I've got a list of the fixes, a list of the fixes and improvements in Eurotruck Simulator 2 update 1.20. Uh, we're going to have increased traffic density in city areas, because in case you didn't think there was enough traffic in the cities, there's going to be now more of it. Added village area rule to allow speci specifying urban area without increasing traffic density. Okay, be interesting to see what that means. There we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't reverse into the wall. Uh, support for spawn trailer count attribute of, of traffic vehicle type, vehicle type. Fixed non-urban speed limit in UK. Lowered the probability of spawning an AI truck without trailer. Fixed license plate definitions switched between bus and trailer. 
These, these are all AI changes, by the way. Use its correct wheel position when placing AI trailer wheels on the ground. Fixed rear wheels of AI vehicles not being placed on ground in steep hills. This sounds like graphical tweaks from natural AI. Fixed vehicles remaining on wrong way lane after avoiding obstacle in some cases. Okay, that sounds like a bug. AI vehicles now turn off engine during fueling. Did they not before? Who notices these things? Who reports these fucking things as My god, SCS, you need to make these changes or you or otherwise the game will be ruined for us forever! Seriously, who the f what's the point in that? What's the point in crying about whether the AI turns off the engine during refueling? Does it really make that much of a difference to your immersive experience? I highly fucking doubt it. Uh oh, we're going. There's some stuff to do with the editor. Modding related. There's some fixes to vehicles, but I can't see because it's at the bottom of the screen and I can't see it. Do, 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 do. Which way out of Glasgow are we going? We're going that way, are we? I don't want to go that way. I want to go north and take the winding country lanes. It might take us a little bit longer. But you know, I'm, I'm up for this. I know you guys know I'm up for it too. So let's change the map back. Ten to five, traffic starting to appear. Let's just drive all over the roundabout. Anything there? No. And 29.30, that'll do. Okay, we didn't get counted as jumping the light, but we are now in the precarious situation. Is he actually waiting for us? I think he is. That's because I was what, too busy watching the sat nav and not paying attention to where we're actually going. But we didn't get a penalty, which is good. Good for the challenge. Very good for the challenge. Ba -ba 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 -ba. But yeah, I want to ignore the sat nav. We're going to go that long, twisty way up. See what Matilda can really do at 17 ton on the way up to Aberdeen. But then again, that means we might be late for the job. No, it'll be fine, I think. 3 hours 46 minutes. Not expecting it no later than half one. Okay, we're going to do it. Although we need to get out of Glasgow first. When was Glasgow so fucking big? Careful, speed camera. I don't know where they are around here. I think that's the turning I want. Yes, it is. Okay, off we go to Aberdeen, taking the long way. Satnav, please realise I'm going this way. I'm not turning around now. This is this is good practice for when we do actually have the race across Europe. Speed limiter turned off though. I'm looking forward to that. I should be able to go faster than 55. Don't get wrong, this challenge has been challenging, but I'm actually quite looking forward to having control of a, 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 you know Matilda with no speed limit again, so we can actually start eating up the miles once again. Satnav, point in the other direction. I'm not turning around. Bad Satnav. Bad. How's everybody doing at home? You doing all right? Income from our driver. Thank you. Yeah, 
what was up with me? I'm sure you're all asking. You know, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just one of those 24 hour bugs that's going around. But I'm alright now, as you can clearly tell. I'm still not 100% right in the head. Then again, some would argue I've never been 100% right in the head. But in terms of my recent issues, I'm still not 100% in my head. But I'm, I'm actually not far off being 100%, you know? I'd say I'm more like 80-90% of the way towards being cool again. Ah, Satna's caught up. Let's stick in 10th gear. Fuck, fuck fuel efficiency. Gives us slightly more control, I feel. One percent on Matilda, zero percent on the trailer. That's good. One percent on Matilda. I must stress is just wear and tear from previous episodes. I think Watson chose this on purpose, knowing full well what I'm going to do. That. Flash off. Oh, I know what I can talk about. I'm doing this straight off the back of a Sentinels of the Multiverse multiplayer session with Squirrel and Pasta. It was a lot of fun. And I've just a second realised that I went straight from that into this. And I haven't discussed with Pasta at all when we're going to put that episode up. Or indeed if we're going to put it up. Shit. And Pasta's not feeling too well at the moment. It's like an internet illness. It's going around everybody. No. But, um, no, what was I actually going to talk about? It wasn't actually going to be sent to the Multiverse multiplayer. Which is a very good game, I might add. It's a very good card game. It's a very good computer game. What was I going to talk about? I should have just run with it when I had the chance. Yes, work! Work related! I am now the proud owner of an 18-ton forklift truck license. Just to put it into context, uh, when we talk about... I'm sure I've mentioned it in the past, but when we talk about our forklift trucks, we talk about them in the capacity they can lift. The forklift itself is the size of a house. Okay, it's a little bit under the size of a house, but it's not far off, actually. You could probably, could probably fit a European family in there quite happily. It's, it weighs 32 tons. It can lift 18 tons, hence the term 18 ton. It's a 18 litre V14. I think it's 18 litre anyway. I'm probably wrong on that one. Let's go for an overtake. I see you behind me. That sort of shit will get us killed in the race across Europe. Come on. Come on. By the way, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. But yeah, I got trained up. I was told about a year and a half ago I was going to get trained up on it. And then finally, I've got the license. I'm, I'm happy. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy, but... Honestly, it's the only thing I've driven that scares me. It's big, it's cumbersome, it's lumbering. It's surprisingly delicate to drive. It's really, really smooth, but it scares me. Because it's 32 tons worth of power under my right foot, or my right hand. I can operate the gears with just one finger. That's how delicate it is. It's an incredibly smooth and brilliant machine is our 18 ton but it's not intimidating, it's scary because the potential to fuck somebody up is so much greater with that particular truck than any other truck I've ever driven I mean up until that point the biggest vehicle I've driven was our 7 ton which has been taken off site because we apparently didn't use it enough What the pro why did you stop there? you should have just carried on and hit me what they probably mean is, we don't like mod using it all the time. No one else can get on it, so we'll get rid of it. Which is a shame, because I could actually load vehicles up with it. 
and move things around without having to worry too much about having to get somebody else to do the work for me with a bigger truck. Alas, it didn't quite work out that way. Oh, there's a bit of road there with grey on it that we're going to leave grey by the look of it. Yeah, that takes us to the motorway apparently. Aberdeen's on sat nav. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. But yeah, it's it's nice to have the responsibility, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really nice responsibility to have, but my god, do I have to drive carefully with it? It's so big, I need what we call a banksman with me at all times. Certainly, at least at the beginning, until I actually gain some experience with it, so I don't need somebody watching me. It's it's just so hard to describe. It's a brilliant machine, not going to lie, but it's so scary. Like I say, the chance to really... It, I could run somebody over and not even notice until someone's screaming at me, Hey, you've killed him! That's how... Seriously, forklift trucks, you generally don't notice when you hit something anyway. You notice if you hit something solid that doesn't go anywhere. That's That goes without saying. But the bigger the truck you drive, the more easy it is, shall we say, to not notice impacts. Like today, I was trying to spin on the spot and I came quite close to hitting a generator behind me, but I didn't because my banksman said, you're okay, you're clear, keep going. And I trusted him. But it could have been so easy, just to have half a lock of steering less and then hit it. And I wouldn't have known. Would not have fucking had a clue that I'd done it. That's how big and powerful these things are. I'm happy though. I'm happy that I'm, you know, my bosses can trust me with this thing because I'm now one of only two people in our company that can drive that thing. It, it's nice. It makes me feel like a senior forklift driver, even though I'm clearly not. There's guys in the company that have been driving forklifts for longer than me. It just so happens that where I work, I need the 18 ton and they don't. Which makes me very happy. This is also a very nice road up to Aberdeen. I'm liking this. Shame it's not very Highlandy. Right, car coming. Steady, car coming. This is going to be interesting. Get up the hill. Down a gear. Man your gearbox. Get up the hill. Man your gearbox. There we go, we're accelerating a little bit more now. I also feel that I'm pressing the accelerator on my joypad just a little bit harder. Just a little bit. Bam! I am now unfortunately out of things to say. This is what happens when you just throw yourself into Euro Truck. Oh no, let's stick in 10th gear. 10th gear is a good gear to be in. Can I sweep around the outside of this guy without hitting anything coming the other direction? Probably not, let's not risk it. Oh, I could have done. Hindsight is a beautiful thing. Also, I don't like country lanes. Not in real life, not here. Speaking of real life, I've got myself a couple of new toys from the GoPro. You know, the camera that you're watching my face through now. Go, 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 go. I don't know one down, I don't know one down. No one bites dust. Yeah, I've got a helmet strap now, and I've got a suction mount thing that you stick to your windscreen. Expect some video blogs coming in the next few days, and also I'm going to have a test recording of the car in motion, which is going to be a lot of fun, I tell you now. Oh, come on, come on. Can't go over the line because it's double lines. Double solid lines means you can't overtake at all. And if you do, it's a penalty! No, blind corner, I'm not risking it. 
Let's hang back, view the traffic ahead, build up a bit of momentum, and then go for the overtake. No, because we're coming up to another blind corner. See, if we'd gone for the overtake then, we'd be making that lorry there. Stop. Bomb. 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 My friend Drazar, he likes it up in Scotland. And he says you can go for hours and hours without seeing another car ever. He likes it, which I think is frankly weird. You know? You can't, you don't see anybody for hours. You can be the only car on the roads in Scotland. I suppose once you get far enough north, then that might be the case. So I'll give him that one. Oh, I didn't tell you guys, did I? Um, the 11th of September is when I'm going to be riding Shotgun with Raza. It's a Friday. So I don't think... Think about the episode plan. I don't think it's going to be in time for 200. Actually, why am I thinking about it? Why don't I just put that on? Sorry, cruise control even. Oh. I need to get into the book of planning and look at the diary. I'm not overtaking because I'm looking in the diary. Eyes on the road, eyes on the road, eyes on the road. That's February, June, July, August. Well, mod sucks. Um, the 11th of September is about two weeks before Hope Athlon. I think I'll have plenty of time to get it done in time for episode 200. So yeah, that's a special thing I'm planning for episode 200. I'm riding Shotgun with Raza. And I'm actually quite looking forward to that one. He drives a man, I think it is, or a daff. I've got the day booked off work so I can go driving with him. And he says if I'm a good mod, he'll even let me drive the truck myself. Which is quite intimidating as well, because he, like I say, the biggest thing I've ever driven is 32 ton forklift. We'll have to see what happens on the day. Also have to factor in that I've only got enough battery life in the GoPro for an hour and a half. Go, 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 go. Shit. 15,000 from one of our drivers. Excellent. You're not going to stop and let me through, are you? You asshole. Thank you. Very kind. Say thank you to the driver behind us, because that's how we roll. I swear, I've overtaken two trucks, but in my attempts to overtake two trucks, I've actually been overtaken by three million others. It's frustrating, I'm not going to lie, but it's just how it goes sometimes when you try to overtake people on a blind road. I'm a and you stopped anyway, and you were the one who was trying to overtake you, fucking cock knocker. Jesus titty fucking uh, Christ springs to mind. Which reminds me, I need to make a video at some point. Uh, Murtai and myself have made some purchases. I need to show off on camera. You people will very much like them. I hope. Right, we can go left or right for Aberdeen. Sat now says. Right. Go. Go. There we go. Pick a lane mod, pick a lane. Got to pick a lane or two, you got to pick a lane or two. I know, day job, don't quit it. But I am told I'm good at my day job, so there's no point quitting it. Plus I like it, I do like my day job. Oh, slow it down a bit, Mumwad, slow it down. We are now in Aberdeen, near enough. Would help, uh, excuse me, it would help if you stayed in the right lane, wouldn't it? 
That would very much help. But this has been a fun episode, even though I haven't really talked about much. That first episode back after illness is always a fun one, I think. Um, actually, guys, what are you doing? It's a 30. This is a 30. Dickhead. Apparently people don't know what a 30 is anymore. Apparently hitting the accelerator while holding the brake makes you roll backwards. Haha, I'm out dragging him! I'm out dragging him! And I win! Even though he stopped first. Oh, roundabout. Let's stick in the middle lane. Yeah, let's this, this just create a middle lane right here, right now. Live in it. While we're here, I think we should actually check out the Aberdeen garage. I don't think we can afford the Aberdeen garage yet. But it'd be nice to think that at the end of the race across Europe, we can afford it. I was told, actually, a very handy little shortcut by Mr. Watson, that if we purchase a garage, we can quick drive to it. I don't think it'll affect our mileage. Because, you know, you're at Race Across Europe, uh, not Race Across Europe, Mini Mile Challenge and all that stuff. But it means if we were to purchase a garage in Bratislava, we could actually drive, we could travel there quickly for free. Meaning we wouldn't need to drive there on camera, we could just go, right, Race Across Europe, boop. So I wouldn't really need one in Bratislava then, I'd need one in... I wouldn't need one in Aberdeen, I mean, I'd need one in Bratislava, that's what I mean, yeah. Well, there's one update they're going to bring into your truck. You're going to, they want to really incorporate World of Trucks more into this. World of Trucks being the main website slash hub for your truck. And they really, really want you guys to go using it, so they're going to try and integrate World of Trucks screenshots more into your loading screens. But the community manager gets to choose them. I don't think it's the case the community gets to vote for which means the chances of us ever seeing Matilda on a loading screen slim to none, if I'm honest. Won't stop you from trying. Come on. Back it up, baby girl. Back it up. Nah, I can't be asked to keep fixing that. Back we go. Back we go. Ding! Complete. Excellent. Ten thousand pounds is ours. Wow, all ten thousand. Bank. I can repay a big loan. That's tempting. That's very tempting. I can also repay repay the smaller loans. But I think first though we're going to have to go for a drive. See the little green icon on the map, on the sat nav? That is the location of the finishing point for the race across Europe. What's the services we're finishing? You see, the services of the garage. I think it's services we're finishing. I can't remember, actually. I'm the one who makes the rules for the race across Europe, and I can't remember them. I'm a good fucking race host, aren't I? Okay, so let's go to the Aberdeen garage anyway. Because why not? Remember, Bradley's 140,000 to purchase said garage. Let's watch the road ahead. 
Hopefully nobody slows down or hits us. There it is, my potential new garage. Hundred and forty four thousand. And that's where I'm going to end the episode. Next time out we'll go to services, we'll rest up and we'll look for another job. Fifty seven thousand, wow. We actually have the money. Who's doing what at the moment? Oh, you're all making over ten pound a mile. That's alright, I can live with that. You're still making no bloody profit though. Heading back. Let's have a quick look at everybody's levelling. Ah, you're maxed out on long distance, so let's get you onto ADR. And you saw one driver had levelled up. Well anyway, that's been it for this episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2. Thank you very much for watching guys. A thumbs up would be much appreciated if you've enjoyed this. Dream big and I'll see you on Sunday for the next episode of this Endurance Challenge. Bye bye.